Hello, this is Athena Starsky, and I have a beautiful friend here today, and David Alexander English. Yay! Yay! And um, I was gonna ask ahead of time what this was about, but he told me, what did you tell me, Rob? Uh, give no thought to what you will say or what you will do, but know that in that hour, the Spirit will speak through you. <laughs> So um, a lot has happened since the last time we did this, and uh, there's a lot of information to share, but we probably won't get to all of it here today. But um, since I saw you last, I have been engaged in this uh, survey of the Earth's subtle energy field. And uh, specifically, uh, there are a pair of, of Earth energy nodes on the west coast um, in central california one in big sur and one in monterey and there's a third one that is uh, near bishop uh, that's actually more powerful than those two and uh, earth energy nodes are where any two ley lines cross one another and ley lines are at least the frequencies that i'm i've been dealing with um, are um, what differentiates them is their source. So there's, there's three sources, the Earth, the Sun, and uh, the centers of galaxies in our galactic neighborhood. Uh, the ones that are generated by the Earth are caused by the core of the Earth rotating against its outer core, creating friction that creates these these ultra low frequency sound waves that radiate to the surface as this whole matrix of subtle energy lines. And up until 2017, they were between uh, one pace and five paces wide. Uh, the solar lines are caused by um, uh, cosmic radiation, which is a catch all phrase for a full spectrum of of um, radiation uh, like alpha waves, beta waves, gamma, x-rays, and so forth. The sun radiates that at the earth and when it hits the upper atmosphere, it uh, creates these uh, uh, particles that are subatomic known as neutrinos. And these neutrino streams are, are streaming down through the earth and through everybody and everything. And uh, on the quantum level, uh, things are so far apart that it's very rare for anything to touch anything. But at the core of the planet, where it's the most dense, there are enough collisions to create um, a whole matrix of ultra low frequency sound waves that radiate to the surface as this matrix of um, solar um, earth energy lines. And the, the, the final, uh, those uh, up until 2017, those are between 10 paces and 30 paces wide. Uh, the third kind are those caused by up until 2017, um, there were only three pairs of, of what are called emperor dragon lines on the planet. And they were 50 paces wide and they're caused by beams of cosmic radiation coming from three galactic sources. Um, same story, they radiate uh, neutrinos down through the earth. And Eventually they create these ultra low frequency sound waves, a whole matrix of them that radiate to the surface as these uh, emperor dra what, have, what have been called emperor dragon lines. And um, as I said, up until 2017, there were three pairs and they only crossed one another in six places. And only four of those places were on land. Okay. And one of those places is this, is Mount Kailash, which is, Uh, 
one of the most um, sacred mountains of the Himalayas, and it's sacred to, I think, five religions that have grown up in that region. Um, to give you an idea of the of, of how our ancestors viewed this sort of energy, the Emperor Dragon energy. Um, what you have there is, is these two pairs crossing one another and crossing, you know, crossing themselves and crossing one another. And so you have four Emperor Dragon lines crossing at the same place. And those, and, and right up, to this very moment, there are people making pilgrimages to that mountain. And when they get there, they uh, walk around the mountain and um, prostrate themselves, which means that they lay down face, face down, arms, legs, and fingers spread as wide as possible. Um, stand up, take a step, and do the whole thing all over all again, around. all the way around the like mountain. Like an inchworm. Right. And I, I've met people that have done this. Um, Do you know how many miles around it is? I, I, I don't. I don't. Okay, but, so what you, the tiny little thing is in South India, in Arunachala, there's a huge mountain, and Ramana, who is my, you know, saving grace here. Uh, walked around at eight miles every single day and considered that same thing. Shiva, like the whole mountain was considered Shiva. Mm -hmm. And I think my, Mount Kailash is similar. Like there, that's yeah, so it's, much energy. It's, it's like a shaft of. Yeah, it, I think it's like the, the home of Shiva is, is okay, another yeah. name mm -hmm. for it, for yeah. Mount Kailash, yeah. So um, I'm, I just share that with you, to give you an idea of, of what our ancestors perceived. You know, as long as there have been people, people have been making pilgrimages to this mountain, perceived the value of this energy. And that was was when they were only 50 paces wide. <laughs> okay? okay? So from so, here to here? Well, here, here's where it goes. In, in uh, 2019, about six months before we did the last interview, okay. um, I doused for the first time the, yeah, using copper angle irons. Um, basically, you, you hold the angle irons and, and when you're in the energy, um, the, the angle irons cross. And when you step out of the energy, the angle lines just point straight ahead. So uh, somebody had gifted me a pair about five years before, and I'd never used them before. And until I, you know, made this pilgrimage up to the top of the mountain when I had been diagnosed with cancer, as my, you know, the, you know, when you're when you're faced with the possibility <laughs> of dying, <laughs> you have, you know, you may have certain places you want to go, and there were only two places that I. I want, felt I needed to, to go in case I was going to leave, you know. And uh, one of them was this mountain in, in Big Sur, which is above uh, Jade Cove. And so I made my pilgrimage to that mountain. I get up there, and the first morning I pulled out the angle irons, and I just started dowsing, and I was able to, to douse the, the actual node. There's uh, two solar lines and an emperor dragon that run through that. And this... This um, was 2019. Um, between 2017 and 2019, three more emperor dragon pairs showed up on the earth. Okay, so that now that there are there there were up there there were six at that point, and uh, so in June of 2019, I got a, a this. I'm working with this uh, British geologist named uh, Rory McQuesten, who's um, pretty famous in dowsing circles, especially in England, because he did the most, he's done the most comprehensive study of the uh, Earth's subtle energy field, and also the most comprehensive study of, of the ley lines of England. And I highly recommend that people check out his uh, Instagram uh, 
if you send me a link, I'll stick it underneath this video so okay. people can go right to him. Right, right. Because that whole like Stonehenge and then Glastonbury and how everything was angled and then the Great Pyramids and the 33 lines and then the Hawaiian Islands and like everything's connected to everything. Exactly. Okay, sacred geometry. All right. So Rory, he, he also he goes by <laughs> Rory Duff. Um, but his his, his full name that. Duff is. middle name and and uh my question is his last name his his instagram handle is uh the geobiologist and uh it, his his account it reads like a, a master class <laughs> in you know earth energy um and he's got a website called roryduff.com i think it's either dot com or dot org and um so he's a a British trained geologist and in his early career he spent seven years working a thousand feet underground in a gold mine in South Africa and uh, in his spare time he learned how to douse and, and has been teaching people how to douse ever since so about at least 25 years worth of experience dowsing um, what in June of 2019, he sent me uh, a Google uh, photograph, satellite picture of this, um, the, the node in Big Sur with the two lines, uh, two solar lines crossing and the Emperor Dragon, this brand new Emperor Dragon through it. You were in the beginning gonna tell everybody what the node was. A, a node is where any Two, two or more ley lines cross one another. So that's like, it creates a lot of energy there. So people like that have never heard this before, like how would they feel a difference? Like if you go to Sedona or something, they, if there are nodes there. So people, when you take them to a vortex, is that a node? It's, it is a node of some form of subtle energy line. Is it, would, would our chakras be considered human nodes? Because they're vortexes? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure you can. Yeah. Okay, I'm just trying to get like a, a picture of how... Okay, so the lines themselves and the nodes are, are essentially concentrations of energy. the energy. The energy. Right. So, yeah. um, That's and earth, one way of... Earth, what, earth energy and cosmic right, energy. Right, because we, we're, energy. we're dividing it up. Right. Right, for our own, you know, way, way of understanding things. But, to, you know, to the source of all that is, it's all one thing. It's all one thing. <laughs> you know, I mean... <laughs> We're all one thing. Draw the line where you want to draw the okay. line. You know? It's not even a node. It's just a... It is what it is. Because the, the reason I'm saying this, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not saying this to just be, you know, vague. I'm saying this because um, all of this is... It, it, it's... These are standing waves of energy. Standing waves. Right? Everything that you see that's solid or whatever is is a standing wave of energy because everything is energy right okay so and this everything is, slow, is made this is of slower exactly and this relative relative to, to whatever, our pers to our perspective or whatever yes exactly exactly because everything changes everything because everything is energy everything is energy right and consciousness and love, love. and love and love and love right right so um and all these Especially time enough. frames and everything and all the are, are being able to to say well this is you know this is a, a candle and this is a cup and this is a leg and and all that right. is it it's all perceptual right and over time it's going to change into something else because everything that's here is made of um, particles and waves of energy that that were born in stars. In stars. <laughs> right. Hence starseed. That's why I like to call myself a starseed. Right. Because right. we are made of particles of stars. All of us. We're just star particles. Frozen exactly. crystals. Exactly. Liquid walking crystals. Standing waves of energy. Standing waves of star particles. Exactly. Exactly. Vibrating, and, undulating. And, and it's not going to last forever. Whatever form it's in, it's going to change over time like an like an exploding star or a collapsing universe right right or a person standing on a sidewalk or a person standing on a sidewalk <laughs> right so um these standing waves of energy have been changing and the reason why we're having this conversation is i got a pretty solid message the other day that i i needed to 
well, it was over several days. He just kept kept tapping me on the shoulder that I needed to to connect with you and uh, and share. Some, What's been happening? Yeah, the survey. So um, I I just want to go back because I don't think I've seen you from a year, maybe more. Yeah, I I think the last time I'm certainly the last time I was here was when we did the interview. Um, was it 2019? In, no, it was 2020, and it, it was right after I had been declared cancer-free for the first time. So, there was that. There was that. <laughs> that small little miracle. You know? So, okay, so this is this is as wonderful this is because... In, in the past two years... Two years. Things... things uh, at, at every solstice and equinox, one of the things that Rory discovered in his survey back, uh, you know, 12 years ago... Uh, between 2008 and 2010, he did a, a, a really comprehensive survey. He lived in, in southern England where there's a lot of ley lines. There's no emperor dragons there, but there's a lot of ley lines, a lot, especially the solar lines. Everybody may be aware of the St. Michael and St. Mary lines, the ones that, that cross at um, Glastonbury Tor and all that. Um, those are all solar lines. Mm. There's loads of those in England, but... but um, that there's no emperor dragons that pass through there, and uh, up until um, up until 2017, there were no emperor dragons in North America. Right? Um, you know, the, remember I told you there were there were three emperor dragons up until 2017 on the planet, and none of them went through North America. Um, there was a, a a node in South America in Peru, but. Um, now, just for people that are hearing this for the first time, what is a ley line? What is this energy? What's a node? If you're just a regular person and you're walking... Regular. A regular person that doesn't know anything about energy and you're walking through a node, do you feel a, a difference in your body? Does everybody feel it or only sensitive people or, or is it felt at all? Is it just a subtle energy? Exactly. Good question. Uh, that depends on the person. And it depends on your intention, right? Okay, because they say because like, people can experience things that um, and not ascribe them to, you know, having any connection to, to the line. to ley lines and or nodes or, or anything like that. Or, or spaces. But this is about to, this is it, as we speak. This is changing, changing because of what I'm trying to get to by giving all this little ground. It's good groundwork, though, don't you think? Yeah, it's good really, groundwork. really. Okay. So, you've got, good thing you put that light there because we're losing the sun. Um, we can never lose the sun, it just... But you know what I mean, we're using, losing the sunlight, direct, direct sunlight. I'm, I'm messing with you. You are messing with me. <laughs> I, I mess with you what because, we do, you because know? why not? Because he, he needs yeah. to be messed with. Okay, go ahead. I, apparently. Um, <laughs> everything is, is aptly placed. So, um, standing waves of energy, Concentrations of energy. Um, hold for sound. Excuse me? Oh, yeah, hold for sound. <laughs> we're, he's we're a in a glide path. He's a director. He should know that. We're, hold for sound. Right, right, right. We're in a, we're in a glide path for... Um, okay, but you're going airport. back to your friend who was, who was the geologist guy. Right, right. So one of the things that, that he discovered was that there were... Um, whether the lines are generated by the Earth, the Sun, or... Uh, uh, the uh, the galaxies. There are four times of the year when all the ley lines um, vibrate at the same frequency. Wow! Exactly. I wonder if you can all play telephone, like like you know when you're in a different part of the room, like in the Washington Monument, you'd be like, "Hello," and you're like way over there, "Hey, I can hear you," and you're like, oh, "I can hear you too," because of the sacred geometry. Yes. Because you're in the same thought form, right? It's the same field. You can send a thought out, and maybe they could pick it up. You'd be like, maybe. Call me. Call me right now. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Okay, it's possible. Okay, it's definitely possible. <laughs> okay, so um, everything vibrated, all the ley lines vibrate at the same frequency um, around the solstices and equinoxes. Um, Twelve years ago, all of this would happen in the same day. So um, that's what, what he, he came to call the harmony period, where all the ley lines are vibrating at the same frequency. Would, would all happen in the same day. They, the, the faster ones would slow down and the slower ones would speed up and they'd meet in the middle. And the way it works is the, the fastest ones are the ones that are generated by the Earth. The slowest ones are the ones that are generated by, by the galaxies and the, the middle 
are the ones that generated by the sun. Wow. And, and so uh, the earth generated ones were between um, 10 and 16 hours, meaning that if you're standing in the line, you can, you can tell that it, it starts to undulate to the left, let's say, for if it's 10 hours, it'd be five hours, right? Okay. And then five hours back, right? If it's eight hours, I mean, yeah, it's, if it's uh, 16 hours, it'd be eight hours to the left, eight hours to the right. Um, those are the earth, earth generated lines. The solar lines would be about 24 hours. So they'd be 12 hours to the left, 12 hours to the right. So, and the, the, the galactic ones would, would be uh, most of them, five of the six that are presently on the earth are, um, they take uh, 48 hours. So 24 hours, 24 hours. Okay, but I have a question. Sure. Throughout history, the people that knew this kind of stuff that you know, did they do rituals or build temples specifically on these spaces because of the energy? Sure. And then when they did rituals, did it make them more special than if they were, were not in that area? Definitely. It, so it made it more potent or it would carry or? Definitely. Magnify all of it above. All of the above. Um, the character of the energy in the nodes, um, when they are open, so it has to be certain days of the year. Exactly. Astrologically, okay. Right, right. And astrologer. The lines, the, the lines are always there. The nodes are always there. But the node, at, what he discovered is that when, during the harmony period, which like I said, used to be all in one day on the, you know, the, the solstice or equinox, okay. would, would be um, uh, super nifty. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you may not party again until three months, you know, you're good. Yeah, right. Only uh, no. four times a year. Okay. So now it's every day. Every day is Christmas. That's what that's what you're gonna say. Every exactly. day is Christmas. Everything. Every day is Christmas. There are not any special days anymore. Right, right, right. Um that is about to not be for very far from the truth. That's what I'm kind of here to deliver the message on. Okay. Oh, thank goodness. Is that what they were talking about? Like in the Hopis, like the golden age of enlightenment where people would like, everybody would go into a certain state of consciousness and be in harmony. Mm -hmm. I was literally, I watched a documentary on yoga and that said the Europa society, 2000 years, no war, no centralized government and no religion. They just went into this pocket and everybody was in homeostasis. Everybody was like getting along without outside rule. It was like inside governance or something. So maybe they were in one of those nodes. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, this is where we're getting, I'm trying to get there. Okay. Okay. Keep All right. Going. So um, what happened is um, when on the solstice or equinox, they'd all align, they'd be in harmony for a number of hours, okay. and then they would break apart. And that would be, that it would all happen in the same day. And then um, about uh, 2000, between 2010 and 2012, they started to expand. The harmony period started to expand to you know two days and three days and so forth, and they've been expanding ever since. Okay, we have um, one more question. The harmonic convergence in 1987 that has anything to do with these no, ley lines no, at the time of no, day? No, 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 but it does have harmony. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what happened is that. Um, as of last March, the harmony period was 15 days long. Wow. Um, Rory's projection is that by 2024, the harmony period will be uh, year round. Do you have six, five days? Starting uh, by the solstice of the, the, the December solstice of 2024. Okay. And, so a couple more years. Yeah. Yeah. But um, that's a golden age. We'll see. We'll see how we how it all plays out. But um, let me get it, get a little deeper into this. <laughs> okay, all right. All well, right. We should probably do part two. Um, so we're just going to keep talking. Here. But we're going to cut it you, here. You okay. Cut okay. It so now we're back. To. This is part two. <laughs> okay. So gonna... so what what's happened is that. Um, between 2017 and 29, three more emperor dragons 
pairs showed up on the planet. And the reason for this is that, um, if you can imagine, the solar system is, is halfway between the center of the Milky Way galaxy, where there's a, um, what do you call it, a, a singularity, a black a, hole. A black hole is right? the center of the Milky the, Way galaxy. And the a edge, black hole is in the Right. We are, we are 26,000 light years from the center so, of the Milky Way galaxy. Okay. And we're halfway from the edge of the, the galaxy. Edge. Right. And it takes the solar system uh, 250 million years approximately to make one orbit around the singularity. Is that a, the galactic year? Yeah. Yeah. For us. For us. Okay. Okay. Um, the solar system is 5 billion years old and has made 20 orbits so far. And each orbit... The, the <laughs> How do you know that? Uh, this is not... We don't... I don't okay, know that okay. we have enough time. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, that's like a lot of facts about the universe. Just go ahead and okay. Google, it, Google it, all right? Okay. And in one okay. orbit, in each orbit, the solar system does this. Okay. Above and below the central plane of the galaxy, all right? So you can imagine that in the central plane of the galaxy is the majority of all the stuff, the stars and everything. dust and everything. Right. Okay? And so as we go up or below, we um, there's less stuff between us and the center of the Milky Way galaxy, right? It takes 70 million years for the solar system to do one of these. And it does three to four of those in each orbit. So it's done about 60 okay. of those, so that's, right? right? And like we, a merry -go -round. it's gonna take us another 30 million years to, to get back to the central plane. Right, that's where we to give you an idea of where we are in the the scheme are of this. Are we on an up cycle? Well, up is relative because because it's a plate, right? And there's okay, but, but to infinity. The, we, we are going into the galactic center, so there is no, no light we're on not. The no, we're moving away from we're moving away from the central plane of the galaxy. We're we're expanding. We're going out away into the darkness. No, 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 no. Okay. We're we're still staying on that 26,000 year light year right elliptical um, distance okay. from the center and but we're moving aw a a away from the central plane of the galaxy okay so here's the center of the galaxy right right this is like a plate okay. right and we're going above or below depending on what your perspective is right. and we're so let's say we're up here we haven't crested we haven't reached the top of our arc yet okay but we're definitely above the central plane Yes. Okay. And it's going to take us 30 million years to get back to the central plane. And then we're going to go through down. it and then down and up again. Okay. All right. And that whole thing takes 70 million years. All right. So the last time the, 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 the last time that the solar system was at the central, was crossing the central plane, there were no Homo sapiens on the planet because Homo sapiens have only been around for 300 to 400,000 years. Okay. Now, the solar system is, has reached a region of, that has less stuff between it and the central uh, part of the galaxy. And it, it appears that the reason why three new emperor dragons have shown up on the planet is because three new galactic sources have been able, the, the radiation coming from those galactic sources has been able to reach the solar system. Um, because the solar system has been passing it out of a cloud of gas and magnetic fields and so okay. forth that have been protecting it. Okay. Right. So um, it is it uh, exposure to cosmic radiation um, can be lethal. It can also uh, stimulate the DNA. Exactly. It can, it can give you your twelfth dimensional DNA strand back. Right. It can. It can stimulate mutations. I'm genetic, up for that. Genetic mutations into our God self. Do we ever leave our God we self? We don't. We're always exactly. God. We're always exactly. God, except for the fact that we do shed our skin. We do shed skin. Um. Only, only in this little petri dish. In this petri dish, we shed our skin <laughs> okay. and into the remembrance because, of the center of the tree. Because we're, you the know, people that is... don't know that they're God yet, there might be people out there. We don't know. But they're, the they're, they're doing that 
because that's the bride that they chose I understand. for this so I'm incarnation. Just saying, I'm just saying for okay? all of us, in the center <laughs> of the self is obviously the God self. And when we're in this juiciness of what you're saying, I feel more beings, it'll be self-evident without reading a book or having oh, anybody say it. I, I'm going to agree with yeah. the self-evidence. Okay, so what's happened is I've been measuring um, the width of the ley lines up in Big Sur and Monterey and the nodes um, at the solstices and equinoxes ever since 2019. And what I've observed and documented is an expansion of those ley lines so that Remember I told you that the first time I went up there, I measured them with my little copper angle irons. I measured them at 50 paces wide. Right. Um, In a couple seconds, I'm going to have to reload. Do what you got to do. Okay. So, <laughs> Two more sentences. So, so, so this is kind of the important part. Okay. All right. Uh, since then, I've in, in, in monitoring this expansion, what I've, you know, it went from 50 paces to 80 paces to 120 paces to 200 paces to 400 paces at, you know, the solstices and equinoxes that have happened over the past two years, right? Till uh, a year ago, September, they were 600 paces wide. Um, by this past March, they were four miles wide. Perfect. By June, I measured them at um, uh, expanding during the harmony period, which had ended up being 18 days long, um, I measured it at uh, expanding at a rate of four miles a day to the point where when the harmony period ended on July 8th, they were um, 92 miles wide. Okay, let's stop there and then we will pick up and clip three.